Hi, this is David, and um, I wanted to do this um, video on Mark Hoffman and the Salamander Letter. Now, those of you in Bolivia and Turkey and Saudi Arabia, you've never heard of this stuff. And a lot of you Mormons who are under 30, you've never heard of it either. Now, I'm so damn old, me and Brigham Young used to have, uh, you know, breakfast together. Um, Mark Hoffman was uh, a missionary, a return missionary. He served his mission in England somewhere, and he came back. And um, I, I don't, I, I do know why, but I'm going to say, I don't know why the Mormon Church draws so many um, uh, people who are going to lie, cheat, and steal. Now, they're not the only religion that has liars, cheaters, and thieves in it, but they're proportionately greater. And I'm, I'm going to make a couple of observations. One is Mormons are poor. Mormons are poor. They may have a big house and a big fancy car, but they're usually three months behind on the mortgage, and usually the house goes into foreclosure. Uh, they don't want to work. They've been on a mission and wearing a suit at 19 years old. They're not going to put a hard hat on and get up on a building and freeze their ass off and bang their fingers. They're not used to working, and they think they're a chosen people. They don't need to work. So they find the most damn devious ways to avoid work. I, they're always attorneys. They're always doctors. They're always dentists. They're always financial planners. They're always counselors or advisors uh, in financial things. And they don't know shit about financial things. Well, they'll do anything to avoid a real job and real work. They think that they've had their suit on for two years. And they're not going to step backwards. Well, Mark Hoffman was one of these return missionaries. I can't tell you how many return missionaries I saw at BYU that came home and their dad helped them get in a business. And within six months to a year, they were bankrupt. They don't know anything about business, but they thought the Lord would bless them and they would prosper because they're righteous people. Nah, those two things aren't even connected together, but the Mormons think they are. Well, Mark Hoffman started to be a pretty smart boy. He came home and he thought to himself, now I'm inside Mark's head right now, so you can take that for what it's worth, um, that he would trick the Mormon church <laughs> into giving him money. Well, the Mormon church is used to tricking everybody else <laughs> into giving them money, so they don't have too many defenses built up uh, from people trying to trick them. Well, Mark was smart. so. Uh, I, I'm going to give a, a, you know, a synopsis of the story because it's a long story and um, I don't want it to be terribly long. So anyway, uh, there was a letter called uh, the Salamander Letter. Now, why it was named after a fish, I don't know. <laughs> but gold plates, <laughs> angels with, flying, with flaming swords. What's with a salamander talking? <laughs> it's as believable as the rest of it. Well... Evidently, Joseph Smith had made some kind of a comment, off the hand uh, cuff uh, comment, that uh, he spoke to a salamander <laughs> who gave him spiritual information. <laughs> Jeez. How can an adult believe any of this? Well, Mark Hoffman was a pretty smart kid. He goes, hey, we haven't got the salamander letter, and I bet if I invented it, <laughs> the church would buy it so they could cover it up. <laughs> well, he was right. <laughs> So he sold to the Mormon church. I don't remember now. You can look it up on the internet. Uh, I don't know how many documents, but several that were in the hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. And here you have these uh, old 85-year-old farts with a magnifying glass looking <laughs> at ancient documents, according to Mark Hoffman. And like they're kind of some kind of damn expert. They, they can authorize <laughs> and, and authenticate. <laughs> Jesus. Ancient documents. Well, Joseph did. <laughs> the book of Abraham has been thrown in the trash can. But anyway, all these old boys that don't know shit, they've got this magnifying glass out, and the press has taken pictures of them buying this fake shit. And Mark Hoffman has this big shit-eating grin on his face <laughs> because he knows these guys aren't prophets. Jesus didn't come down and say, Hey, hey, don't buy that. That's tithing money of my people. Well, anyway, um, they wanted to buy these false documents, 
and Hoffman sold them. <laughs> he lived big. <laughs> he lived large. He was flying all over and, and laughing his ass off. Well, the, the, the uh, jaws of the law started to clamp down on these deals. And uh, I guess the Mormon prophets found out that um, they had been made a fool of. And so um, Hoffman knew, I think, that his time was somewhat limited, and he targeted a few people that were uh, closing in on him. And uh, <laughs> I think he forged documents better than he made bombs. But anyway, the first bomb killed a bishop and a bishop's wife. And uh, that did not fly <laughs> well in Salt Lake City. And then Hoffman had another bomb for another uh, victim in the trunk of his car. And uh, when he opened the trunk of his car to place the bomb, <laughs> the bomb went off. <laughs> and Jesus was punishing him. <laughs> so he was seriously injured. And then uh, the whole thing came uh, crashing down. Now the prosecutor uh, in Salt Lake City that would handle this case was Mormon. Everybody is Mormon in the judicial system. You are not going to see justice in the American system in Utah until more of you move in here. And with me, we vote their asses out of there. But anyway, um, the Mormon church did not want this to go to trial in a million years because it made their prophets, seers, and revelators look like assholes, fools, and crazies. And so they went to the prosecutor uh, and said, well, gee, you know, could we get a plea deal? <laughs> a plea deal on a murder. <laughs> so anyway, a long story short, um, they did not want the Mormon prophets called in to be witnesses and humiliate them in the press and humiliate them that they didn't know what the hell they were doing. So Mark Hoffman was able to um, plea deal down to almost nothing. He's in the... The uh, point of the mountain is our, our state penitentiary here in Utah. And um, it's been 20 years since this went on. So, you know, you had to be somewhere around 30 years old to remember it. And being 64, I remember it well. And so um, there was no trial. There was no humiliation of the apostles and prophets, which there should have been. We should all be responsible for our sins and the things that uh, we've done right and rewarded and the things we've done wrong. So I just wanted to kind of bring everybody in the world, because I, I have some people, like I said, in Turkey, Argentina, Chile, uh, Brazil, all over the world, and you don't hear this stuff. The church hides this, hides it, hides it. People like me, I feel a little bit of a, of a service and an obligation to say this is the truth. Mark Hoffman is down there for blowing up uh, the bishop and uh, the authorities uh, got away with spending millions of dollars in, in the people's money and the only people that really knew about it were around Salt Lake and outside of Utah none of you heard anything about the Mark Hoffman case so if you want to make money off the Mormon church you have to be more tricky and more clever than they are so Mark Hoffman was he got lots of money he lived large and when he gets out of jail I don't know if he got a life sentence or not um, I, I think that he may have <laughs> in Utah, you know. So anyway, I just want to let you know about Mark Hoffman and how the Mormons uh, institute justice in their own state. If you're a Mormon and you're facing a Mormon jury and a Mormon prosecutor, you're out of there. You're good. You're out of there. You walk in there with a tattoo, an earring in your ear, uh, and no garments on, you might as well bend over and kiss your ass goodbye in the state of Utah if you're looking for justice. Please, all of you come to Utah. We'll vote their asses out of here. Thanks.